When I fell in love with it, it was only on the radio for one hour. And I had to take the cassette tape and put tissue in the back of the cassette tape so I could re-record over some stuff my grandmother recorded and capture that one hour that it played on, on the radio and now it's everywhere. It's your birthday. We gon' party like it's your birthday. We I learned more from watching them than talking to them. Dre's success is also connected to his relationships. It's the one and only D R E. Cause I would make music. I don't care if I wrote a song that sounded like it belonged in the King James version of the Bible. And Jesus Christ yeah. anointed the music. Yeah. Jimmy would listen to the record and go, this is great, this is great. Just go across the street to Dre, trust me. And what it would do is the material that I had that was really exciting, I would play it and then Dre would get excited and then he would give me the hottest thing that he had at that point. Cause you don't want to be on the record and just be a Dre beat on that album. They want to be the best record every time he's making a record. And NWA made the West Coast bang. Nah, it's just music, man, it's just music. Now get your on the dance floor and move it. Say anything that you think could be compatible to Eminem. I'm Slim Shady, yes, I'm the real Shady. All you other Slim Shady's are just imitating. So you know he's sold over like 90 million records. There's nobody that you can look at and you can point to and say that is equivalent. He's the bridge culturally for hip hop culture to lose his color, for everybody to feel like they want to participate and be a part of it. No Eminem, no Rolls Royces and Ferraris for these that you see. Do you see what I'm saying to you now? They won't be able to earn the same amount of money off the projects that they have going on because there wouldn't be that many consumers of it. So when they would look and go, oh, why he sold more records than the rest of Oh, because he's white. You know what I'm saying? And you look and you say, what's the difference between the projects and the trailer park? There ain't much difference, bro. And this is why culturally it makes sense that it get into the same things. And then when you're authentic and you actually come on that journey that way, bro, you could get whoever you think is the best, put them in the room with them. When, when I'm doing 13 million records, the Marshall Mathers LP is doing 23 million records. So I'm always clear that there's room for growth. Artists would feel like they made it when they got the deal because you had to earn the right to have the deal. Everybody's in the business. If he got a microphone connected to his laptop and he got a beat from YouTube and he paid for the beat and he recorded his song last night and it's on iTunes now, he's in the music business. You see what I'm saying? Like they meet the audience before they meet the record company now. So there's no artist development. So if you look at the music business right now, it's why you don't see any groups. The last thing we have was the Migos. And you look, where's the R&B group? There's no R&B groups. That took artist development. Not all of them was right with each other. They had to be put together for that to take place. And that development is not there. So those people are creating solo projects instead of working together. When Cardi came, it was dope because she's from the bottom in Lust, Brooklyn. Like from that, and you actually go make a hit record. I don't know anybody who wouldn't like to see that. And it felt like she got everything that year. Got married, got the baby, everything really fast. It came and I'm like, that's what the, the culture needs for people to see the dream happen. That's the American dream right there. If you carry that much of the energy from the street into music culture, then expect shit that happens to the street to happen in music culture. It's, it's why we get more hip hop homicides. I did a series on WeTV, Hip Hop Homicides, and since the show went into production, there's a whole new season of fresh cases that, that you could do for next season. But as we've grown and expanded at the same time, we're getting a lot more casualties and more things are taking place. It's about going back into the environments that we come from. We don't want to be new people. We just want to be the people we are in a better situation. You could look at it like you're just going home. You want to go back to the neighborhood, chill, and, and see just the energy and the environment. Now that you made it, you want to you know, go. But the people that's there that didn't, that weren't blessed with the same success, some of them feel like you just came back to show them what they don't have. When we hit the bullseye with power, the targeted audience is very rare that you get the entire audience excited. And 
I'm looking going Fox, they hit the bullseye behind us for Empire, like right after. But there's, because it's on Fox Network, they were gonna offer the PG-13 version of the story that it was offering because it's network television. While I can be R-rated and give them a more graphic, heightened sense of the experience, I knew that that would eventually prevail over what they was doing. But I, I would say, uh, they stole my idea because they said empires are built on power. That's good marketing because I'm at a disadvantage and not having the finances to market on the same level. We got to have a problem. So I, that's where the beef comes from. I love Taraji P. Henson. I think she's amazing. Um, Terrence Howard was my co-star in the first film that I worked in, you know, so of course I wanted to see the show be successful. <laughs> I get the attention that I want from music culture when I want it. Like I, I said, I just went out and I did 45 countries everywhere sold out. That is like, to me, I, I feel like I want to do something new and, and offer new music that I can integrate into everything else now. But I think I did it, what I wanted to do.